Welcome to our webinar series, Non-Invasive Prenatal Testing, Background, Science, and Clinical Implementation. This first module begins with a background discussion of chromosomes and DNA and a review of common chromosome aneuploidies. After viewing this webinar, you should have a basic understanding of chromosomes and DNA, terminology used when discussing genetic conditions, and be able to identify common features of Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, monosomy X, and other sex chromosome abnormalities. First, let's discuss chromosomes and nuclear deoxyribonucleic acid, or nuclear DNA. Nuclear DNA is contained in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells and encodes the majority of the genome in an individual. DNA is formed by long strands of connecting nucleotides, which are distinguished from one another by their organic bases. Adenine and guanine are larger bases known as purines, and they bind with the smaller pyrimidine bases, thymine and cytosine, respectively, A with T, C with G, as shown. The organic base, sugar, and phosphate components of nucleotides form strong bonds with one another and form the double-stranded DNA double helix structure that most are familiar with. Condensed strands of compacted DNA form chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs, and these are inherited from generation to generation. The mature human gametes, the egg and the sperm, are formed following meiosis and should contain only 23 chromosomes each, or one of each pair. However, we do know that errors in this process can and do occur. When discussing chromosomes, here is a basic list of terminology with which one should be familiar. Autosomes refer to non-sex chromosomes. Chromosomes pairs 1 through 22 are autosomes in humans. Sex chromosomes determine the genetic sex of an individual and are the X and Y chromosomes in humans. A karyotype is a picture provided following standard cytogenetic analysis. It shows all chromosomes in a cell paired up and identified from one another. A cell that is euploid is one that contains the typical number of chromosomes expected for a species. It is designated as 2N. For humans, this number is 46. Aneuploidy, in contrast, is when the number of chromosomes present is different than what is expected for a species. Typically, this is 2N plus or minus 1. A trisomy is a type of aneuploidy that results from the presence of a third copy of a particular chromosome. A monosomy is a type of aneuploidy that results from the absence of one of the two copies of a particular chromosome. Copy number variation, also known as CMV, involves imbalances in segments of DNA or other chromosomes that differ from one individual to the next. These differences may not cause any health or developmental problems. However, some types of CMVs, like microdeletions and microduplications, may be disease-causing. Triploidy refers to an entire extra set of chromosomes per cell, or 69 total chromosomes per cell, or 3N. Here is a normal female karyotype. You can see that the chromosomes are aligned by pair, arranged by size and position of centromere, with the sex chromosomes being shown last, following the pairs of autosomes. This next karyotype depicts the chromosomes for an individual with Down syndrome or trisomy 21. Note the extra copy of chromosome 21 that is present. This next karyotype also depicts chromosomes for an individual with Down syndrome. However, in this case, the extra copy of chromosome 21 is actually joined to or translocated onto another chromosome. In this case, a translocation between chromosomes 14 and 21 is present. The number of chromosomes is what is expected, 46. However, because there is an additional copy of chromosome 21 present, this results in the same features as trisomy 21. Translocations are structural rearrangements that occur between chromosomes. Robertsonian translocations involve the acrocenter chromosomes, which are listed on this slide. If a Robertsonian translocation involving chromosomes 21 or 13 occurs, there is a risk for conception with trisomy 21 or trisomy 13. Mosaicism is a phenomenon that occurs when all the cells in an individual's body are not comprised of the same genetic material. Some of the cells may have a missing or extra chromosome, while others do not. This slide shows a woman who is mosaic for monosomy X. The pink areas show the body tissues made up of cells missing one copy of the X chromosome, 45X, whereas the purple areas show the body tissues made up of cells with the typical number, 46XX chromosome. 
When an individual is mosaic for an aneuploidy, it is difficult to predict how severely affected the individual may be. When discussing aneuploidy in a prenatal setting, it is commonly discussed in relation to maternal age. As previously mentioned, aneuploidy can result if an error occurs during gamete formation. The egg begins meiosis at the time of ovulation and completes the process at fertilization. One theory is that eggs become more prone to mistakes in meiosis as a woman ages. Thus, as maternal age increases, there is an increasing risk for aneuploidy. This slide shows the relationship between maternal age and aneuploidy. However, it also states that most babies with Down syndrome will still be born to women less than 35 years of age because more women in this population are having babies. We are now about to delve into descriptions of genetic syndromes, and the remainder of the modules in this webinar series focus on screening and testing for such syndromes. I want to take a moment, though, to remind you that most pregnancies, approximately 97%, are without birth defects and genetic syndromes. Of the 3% of pregnancies with birth defects, the majority, 40 to 60%, are from unknown causes. When considering chromosomes and single gene conditions, we can potentially utilize genetic screening and testing to provide answers and clarifications in this subset of cases with birth defects. Moving forward in this webinar series, we will primarily be focused on the 10 to 15 percent of cases of birth defects caused by chromosomal changes. Though theoretically any chromosome can cause aneuploidy, the reality is that very few aneuploidies can result in viable fetuses and lifeborn infants. These selected syndromes, Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, monosomy X, Kleinfelter syndrome, triple X, and XYY are aneuploidies that can result in live-born infants. Together, these syndromes account for approximately 84% of chromosome abnormalities reported. Clearly, Down syndrome is the most prevalent aneuploidy. This slide is a brief summary of the genetic causes and major physical characteristics of Down syndrome, which is also known as trisomy 21. We reviewed the genetic causes previously. Two to three percent of cases of Down syndrome will be mosaic. The incidence of Down syndrome is one in 700, with there being a clear correlation, as previously shown, with maternal age. Individuals with Down syndrome show many characteristics, including facial features, growth failure, and appearance of hands and feet. Additionally, congenital heart disease, kidney, and intestinal problems are common in these individuals. Various degrees of developmental delay and intellectual disability also occur. Trisomy 18, also known as Edwards syndrome, is more severe and less common than Down syndrome. The incidence is 1 in 6,000 to 8,000, with a correlation between risk for trisomy 18 and advancing maternal age. Individuals with trisomy 18 may have severe birth defects of multiple organ systems, including heart, genital urinary, respiratory, neurological, and digestive. The majority of individuals with trisomy 18 do not survive to term or die within the first year of life. Trisomy 13, also known as Patel syndrome, is also a very severe genetic syndrome. The incidence is 1 in 8,000 to 12,000 live births. Severe birth defects in multiple systems are also common in trisomy 13, and survival beyond the newborn period is very rare. In contrast to the three autosomal trisomies just described, sex chromosome aneuploidies are less severe and often may go undetected during pregnancy and in the newborn period. Fetuses with sex chromosome abnormalities do not typically have ultrasound findings. Also, prior to NIPT, there are no traditional serum screening methods that screen for these aneuploidies. Sex chromosome aneuploidies, including monosomy X, XXY, XXX, and XYY collectively have an incidence of 1 in 300 to 1 in 400 births. The most common features in sex chromosome abnormalities are learning and behavioral difficulties and fertility problems, although these can be quite variable, as will be discussed later. Arguments can be made that early detection can help with both delivery management, for cases with monosomy X, for instance, as well as early childhood interventions to address some of the common delays seen in individuals with sex chromosome aneuploidies. Here is more specific information regarding monosomy X, which is the most common of the sex chromosome abnormalities. In contrast to other sex chromosome abnormalities, one might see findings on ultrasound, like a heart defect or increased nucleotransistency. Monosomy X has a high rate of spontaneous loss in pregnancy and is also known to be present in mosaic form. 
Early identification for management of endocrine problems is also important. Another sex chromosome abnormality in females is triple X or 47XXX. This condition occurs in approximately 1 in 1,000 newborn girls. This condition has mild clinical features with some learning difficulties and perhaps some developmental delay, but the spectrum varies. Triple X females are fertile. Kleinfelter syndrome, or 47XXY, occurs in approximately 1 in 600 males. There is a correlation with both advancing maternal and paternal age for Kleinfelter syndrome. Specific features of this syndrome can include developmental delay and small genitalia with enlarged breast tissue at puberty. Individuals may have decreased fertility as well. Early identification and hormonal treatment at puberty may aid with development and puberty. Lastly, 47XYY, also known as Jacobs syndrome, is seen in approximately 1 in 1,000 males. There are no distinguishing physical features, but individuals can have some varying developmental and behavioral issues, including motor delays or tics and autism spectrum disorder. This concludes the first module of non-invasive prenatal testing, background, science, and clinical implementation. Thank you.